So, uh, thank you very much. Well, this introduction was very challenging. Um, you, uh, I need first to apologize because I'm a French politician, meaning my English is bad. <laughs> I will try, however, my best. Uh, so, this morning uh, we had discussion about this problematic how to humanize companies. Now we are going to discuss a subject which is even harder, how to humanize politics. And it is not that easy. It is not that easy, particularly those times, those days. Come and good. I should be the specialist. I am a politician. I should be the specialist for common good. I consider politics as a vocation, a way of building up the society for common good. I believe that the key point uh, for politics should be love for people. And I believe that the key objective of politics is common good. Who still believe that this is the fact? Who still have faith in politicians? It has become a dramatical situation, particularly in my country, France. Just let me give you some results of polls. According to a poll of Opinion Way, which was made by the CNRS, which is a research center in France, in January 2014, 87% of French people do not trust the political class anymore. A recent poll made by BVA in March 2014 shows that close to 7 out of 10 French people state that political leaders are most often corrupted. That's my business. <laughs> and I have to deal with that. It is not easy, definitely. And it's dangerous. Because common good is not so common. And if you don't have politicians to support a vision of common good for a country, then who is going to do it? Because we need everybody, we need companies, we need civil society, but we need politics as well. And you cannot transform a country if you don't have the politics. It's absolutely key in the capacity of a country to be renewed, to find new energy. We, we mentioned that at the table this morning. We need a double cross mechanism, the, the renew of company, but in the meantime, the capacity of the politics to renew and to immunize globalization. I will try to, to focus on different aspects of, um, of, of the crisis we are facing and of the hope we should find through concrete examples uh, in my political life as mayor and as ministers. First of all, why have I chosen to become politician? This was the big question for my grandmother. I am, uh, I belong, I was born to a family of entrepreneurs. And the idea that one member of that family could be, could choose politics was just awful. I think it's, it's the worst thing I ever announced to my grandmother. And she just te uh, told me wh when I, when I announced her that uh, I was going to run for election, she just told me two things. I just hope you're not going to jail one day. That was the first point. And the second point was, please don't lose your soul. And she gave me a small statue, which was a very nice idea. It was a small statue of stone. And she told me just like that. And she told me, this statue of stone mean, uh, means for me two things. First of all, it is in the direction of future. You need to be ambitious. We had the discussion about the talents uh, this morning. But in the meantime, never forget that this is a hand for the others. And if you do politics, you have to keep your hand for the others. I still have that statue on my desk, and I try to remember on that. The very important personality for me, which was really something crucial in my reflection about politics, was maybe some of you heard about her, Sister Emmanuelle. Sister Emmanuelle was a French sister. She decided uh, to to work in Cairo, in Egypt, uh, in the slums. It's the worst part uh, of the world I have ever been. The slums of Cairo. It's uh, a mass of very small streets, and you have uh, all the garbages uh, of the city who are put there. Uh, it smells awful. And Sister Emmanuel came there. What could, her, could she uh, do? Nothing. But she decided to do things, small things, small things after small things. And month after month, years after years, she managed to change 
the, this part of Cairo and to bring hope to those people. And she always had two habits when I met her because I worked for her in her association. Uh, I was teaching in a school uh, in Cairo, in, the, in this part of Cairo. And she always uh, told me two things. The first point, every time I met her with his small eyes, she told me, Laurent, what have you done good since the last time I met you? This is not an easy question. Believe me, it is not an easy question. What have you done good? And it is very healthy to ask yourself frequently that question. And the second one was, um, I tried to mention it correctly because she, she said it very, very often, if every man and every woman bring a drop of water, the ocean would change. This means for me something, there is no fatality, never. If you decide to do it, you can do it. There is no fatality that profit should be shoot, uh, short term, no fatality. There is no fatality that politicians should be corrupted, never. There is no fatality. If you decide to change the things, you can change it. Then, um, maybe let's take a little bit distance and think about what is common good. And why is it, uh, has it become so difficult to construct common good in the modern society? Common good, we, we could take the definition of Aristotle, which, which are quite interesting, but I like one of St. Thomas Aquinas. Aquinas further observed that people tend to look only after their own self-interest. But then he say, therefore, we need in every multitude, there must be some people to direct people toward the common good. This is the main difficulties. Why? I would mention three, three main uh, obstacles today. The first one is short term. The modern society is short term. It is not easy to find common good when you think short term. The second point is that the modern society is mainly profit oriented. It's not easy to find uh, common good when you're mainly profit oriented. And the third one, which is the most difficult for politicians, is that it's getting harder and harder to make people work together. Just listen to other. Just accept that the other has not exactly the same interest as you, not exactly the same vision as you. And it became very difficult. It is what I call the backyard spirit, not in my backyard. You can do everything, but not in my backyard. I don't care for common good. I don't care for common interest. The thing I care is my backyard. And this point make, make it very makes it very difficult for politicians to be still able to construct a common vision through the country and through different people um, with the communitarism, with, with the tendency of everyone to construct only the backyard and not the common society. Just to mention one example, when I was in charge for France uh, for European affairs, I tried to put an, an initiative on the table uh, with a new policy about brain disease. The idea was that one. We have many research centers all around Europe about, uh, around, uh, about brain disease, but everyone is working alone. It should be possible to, to make them work together. If we make them work together, we should have the capacity to discover uh, new drugs, new vaccine uh, against Alzheimer and all brain disease. It just, through the different expectation of the, of the research, we need five years if we work together. So we tried to propose that. Answer of UK was, it's going to cost too much. Answers of Poland was, I do prefer research on coal because I have coal. Answer of Finland was, no, I don't have research on brain disease, I'm not interested. Answer of Slovakia was, well, I don't have pharma company, I'm not interested. And everybody forgot just one thing. I have people who are suffering through brain disease and the common good is there. The common good is not only the small interest, the small national interest, it's before the common good of the citizens. We failed. We were not able to put that initiative on the table. And for me, it was the beginning of a reflection about Europe. Europe is not working anymore. We have a problem. We need to change it. We need to find new routes for the European project. Then, am I pessimist? No, definitely not. I'm not pessimist because in the meantime, where I see this crisis of common good, 
I do believe that we have extraordinary energy in the new generation, but in this new society, who is appealing for a new vision of common good. Let me take a new example. We are 2009. It's the beginning of the crisis in France, particularly um, with unemployment. And the statistics of apprenticeship, I worked on that with Pierre, were, were awful. It was just a disaster. Apprenticeship in France, as in Germany, is very important to help our students to find jobs, not only for uh, wor uh, manual workers. Uh, as example, Pierre formed engineers or commercials uh, of high level through apprenticeship. But the statistics were getting awful. At the beginning, we decided to put political initiative on the, pap uh, on the table. Uh, public uh, subsidies and, and different tools uh, just made by the government. It was a failure. Then we decided to put everybody, every actor, in the same room. At the beginning, the social partners said, well, we need money for, uh, uh, for the social partners. The schools answered, we don't have enough subsidies uh, to make things for apprenticeship. The companies answered, it is not possible, we don't have money, it's the crisis, forget it. We just try to keep the business, uh, we are not going to take a new apprenticeship uh, inside of our company. But that was the beginning. And at the end, through a discussion around something like two weeks, we were able to construct together an action plan. And that was just a miracle, because everybody brought his own stone to, for the new approach. And we were able, through the crisis, not only to save and to defend the apprenticeship, but to increase it by 10%, and 90% of the students who, 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 have been, who have gone through that program find a job at the end of the studies. That was just wonderful. With one ID, common good is not anymore an ID of the politician. But the politician has the capacity to put in the, in, in the room all the different actors and to ask them to try to find a common interest. And that is the responsibility of the politician. It is not anymore Roosevelt or De Gaulle. This is not the vision, the proper vision for, for the modernity of common good. But we still need politicians to put the different people together and to be able to focus on that common work. Then it is not enough, of course. Because at my point of view, if we try to go a little bit deeper in the reflection, there are four conditions to be able to still construct common goods in the modern society. The first one, and you will talk about that, is a strong ethics. This is just vital for politics in modern times. We ask people to make efforts. Do we, politicians, make efforts? We ask people to uh, help us to cut uh, in the deficits and uh, we put more and more taxes. Do we, politicians, make the same efforts? Are we able to fight against corruption? Those days in France, we are facing a huge political financial scandals. It's just awful, but it's not a scoop. The French democracy is making a scandal like that every year since 30 years. There was a time where we had people like Le General de Gaulle, who had on his desk, I, I like that because it's so symbolic, uh, two, how do you say that, two plumas? Can you say plumas? Two, hein? Des encriers. Uh, ink holders. One was for official letters. That was paid by the government. And one was for private letters, and it paid that ink holders. Do you really think that we still have politicians who pay the ink holder? I'm not so sure. And uh, we need that. It's impossible to transform the society if you are not on the way of exemplarity for politicians. Or the politicians are not better than the others. We need rules. The, Sweden, the Swedish democracy was able to put tho those rules uh, in action. The German democracy was able to, it's not perfect, but it's, I would say it's better than France, which is not so difficult. Um, I'm fighting on that. I fought against my own party on that. I voted laws for transparency. I refused uh, to have the bonus that uh, is for uh, ex-ministers 
when uh, the function ended uh, in France, you have a bonus for the ministers, which is quite surprising. And uh, I'm fighting against the pension system, the retirement system of the parliamentaries, which is particularly profitable for the MPs. We have to fight that. And it's not anecdotic. You cannot have political leadership if you are not able to assure transparency, exemplarity and honesty. It's impossible without those values. The second point is correct. Common good is not so easy because people and public opinion is not always supporting common good. If you have politicians who are uh, uh, defined by the lake of courage, it's impossible to change the society. When you say that it's very easy, when you experience it as a person, it's much more difficult. Let me give you an example. Those days we have debates about uh, the unemployment uh, assurance system for artists in France. It's very profitable, it costs a lot, and it's, it's getting stupid. I made a declaration saying we have to change it. Then I had in my town the Feast of Music that was last weekend. The artists were not very satisfied with my declaration. And they decided not only to make strikes against me, but to go to the school feast of my own children. And they made a declaration saying this man is awful, he is a stupid man. We cannot accept that he says such things. Uh, it's absolutely awful. With my children in the room, it's not so easy because you don't want to suffer that. And you don't want to suffer that for your own children and for your own family. Courage for a politician, it's not only word. You have to experience it in your own family and you have to be ready to pay for your own values and you have to prepare the people who are around you to pay as well for that. The third thing is that you need values. It seems so easy. But who really has values? Which vision of society? In what do you believe? Do you believe in society? Do you believe in family? Do you believe in work? Or do you believe in consumption? Do you believe in long term? Do you believe in short term? Do you believe that it's better when you talk about social uh, to make uh, social pensions? Or do you think that it's better to help people to find a job? Before each technical decision, you need to have values. You cannot change society if you don't have before a vision. And the problem of the modern policy, politic, is that we have technical. We have technical people with technical vision, small vision, no more ambition, no more vision. Just to take an example, I do believe, and it, it is as well in the roots of the social Christian doctrine, that the main things in society is work. Because not only because we create values or we, because we create profits, just because this is the human being. And just because that the human dignity is in work and is the capacity of everybody to create something through his work. When we have the problem of uh, assistance ship, when we have the problem of the, um, of, uh, the difficulties we are facing through the social system, this is the question which is for me the most important. What is the most important? Is it to, to finance uh, a licensed car? Because then the people is going to find a work? Or is it to, to, to give money each month without really taking care of the person? We need vision. The problem for me of Europe is that there is no more vision of the human dignity and the, of the human dignity through work. Then the last thing, which is not, uh, I would say, last but not least, is modernity. What is modernity? Many people do believe that uh, if, you, if you want to, to change the society, you have to be modern. This is the ultimate word. You have to be a modern politician. So the polls are going to be with you, the society is going to be with you, the public opinion is going to be with you. This is absolutely stupid. Modernity means nothing. If it's not with values inside, which modernity? If the modernity brings the society in the wall, I'm not interested. If the modernity destructs uh, all the society and the values which are able to, to keep us together, I'm not interested. Modernity alone is not a value for me. When uh, I had to face in France the debate about my uh, marriage for any sex, yeah, can we say that like that? Yeah. What? 
Okay, same sex wedding. That was the question for me. All the, the politician strat, uh, strat, strategy, yeah, can you say that? Okay. Um, put all the warning, telling me you're just making huge mistakes. You have to be modern. You are 39. If you're not modern, you're dead. So you have to defend uh, multi sex marriage, same sex marriage. <laughs> be afraid. <laughs> It could come. <laughs> it could come. But the question was not that for me. The question for me was, do I believe in family? Do I defend family? What are my, my values? That was the only question. And my obsession was not to be modern, or to, uh, to appear as modern. Just to think, what are my deepest values and what do I want for the society tomorrow? Of course, family, it's getting difficult, more difficult. And we have to defend family. We have to help new forms of family, but not on that way. And uh, for me, it was also a very big question for, my, for myself, telling me, well, the important point is not to seduce. The important point is to be conform in what you believe. I'm not asking everybody to believe the same things as me, but I'm asking myself as acting what I believe. This is very important as well. Now, to end, just maybe some things. You cannot transform society without politics, but politics cannot transform society alone. We need you. Politics is not the things of the politicians. It's the things of everybody here. And we need, I need your involvement in politics, because we cannot do that alone. It's, politics is not a stand-alone thing. We need the investment of everybody. The second point is that there is no future politics without common good. But for that, we need still to believe in politics. And I would like to say, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I'm sure that there is still hope. There are still politicians who want to bring that vision. And for me, the things which is the deepest hope, which helps me to, to go further, is that um, ID that the public opinion wants as well to believe. Of course, they are despaired. Of course, they are absolutely horrified by the way the modern politic is acting. But in the meantime, they are asking for a new hope. And the question for us is to be able to reconstruct that new hope. It is not so difficult. Ethics, courage, values to be able to face modernity. What should be fatality? We just have to do it. It's not so difficult. Thank you.